it's not crazy. It's a, uh, it's a paradox. Uh, paradoxes are part of nature. But think about light. Now, if you look at Huygens, light is a wave, as confirmed by the double slit experiment. But then along comes Albert Einstein and discovers that light behaves like particles, too. Well, I didn't make it worse. I have a master's and two PhDs. I should not have to do this. <laughs> what? I am truly sorry for what happened last night. I take full responsibility. And I hope that it won't color your opinion of Leonard, who is not only a wonderful guy, but also, I hear, a gentle and thorough lover. <laughs> I did what I could. I don't know, you guys work in the same lab. So? There are pitfalls, trust me, I know. When it comes to sexual harassment law, I'm a bit of a self-taught expert. <laughs> Look, Howard, if I were to ask Leslie Winkle out, it would just be for dinner. I'm not going to walk into the lab, ask her to strip naked and dance for me. Oh, then you're probably okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming on such short notice. Oh, you did the right thing, Colin. I didn't know what else to do. He's lost all focus. Every day he's got a new obsession. <laughs> This is a particularly disturbing one. <laughs> Mommy? Hi, baby! <laughs> All right, I'm moving my infantry division. Augmented by a battalion of orcs from Lord of the Rings, we flank the Tennessee Volunteers, and the North once again wins the Battle of Gettysburg. Not so fast. Remember, the South still has two infantry divisions, plus Superman and Godzilla. No, 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 no. Orcs are magic. Superman is vulnerable to magic. Not to mention, you already lost Godzilla to the Illinois Cavalry and Hulk. Why don't you just have Robert E. Lee charge the line with Shiva and Ganesh? Are right, you guys ready to order? Hang on, honey. Shiva and Ganesh? The Hindu gods against the entire Union army? And orcs. I'll be back. Excuse me. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles and Shiva is the destroyer. When the smoke clears, Abraham Lincoln will be speaking Hindi and drinking mint juleps. I'll get it! to have a costume meeting. We all have other costumes. We can change. Or we could walk right behind each other all night. It'll look like one person going really fast. No, no, no. It's a boy-girl party. This Flash runs solo. Uh, okay, how about this? Nobody gets to be the Flash. We all change. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I call Frodo! Damn! Where did my life go, Penny? <laughs> One day I'm a carefree bachelor, and the next I'm married and driving a minivan to peewee cricket matches in suburban New Delhi. Are you talking to me? Is there another Penny here? <laughs> I had such plans. I had dreams. I was going to be the Indira Gandhi of particle astrophysics. But with a penis, of course. <laughs> it's amazing. Ever since I was a little boy, my father wanted me to be a gynecologist like him. 
How can I be a gynecologist? I can barely look a woman in the eye. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to let my parents control my future any longer. It's time for a showdown. Somebody give me a computer with a webcam. Okay. There you go. You're right. This side does look better. No, no. I didn't say better. I said less stained. <laughs> I just checked the house. There's probably 20, 25 people in there. You're kidding. Is that all? All? In particle physics, 25 is Woodstock. Oh. Well, then good. I wasn't expecting such a crowd. I'm a little nervous. It's okay. Just open with a joke. You'll be fine. Okay. Uh, joke. Okay. How about this? Um, okay. Uh, there's this farmer, and he has these chickens, but they won't lay any eggs. So, he calls a physicist to help. The physicist then does some calculations, and he says, um... I have a solution, but uh, it, it only works with spherical chickens in a vacuum. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, sorry. I've just, I've heard it before. No, see, the liquid metal terminators were created in the future by Skynet. And Skynet was developed by Miles Dyson, but that future no longer exists due to Dyson's death in Terminator 2. Okay, then riddle me this. <laughs> Assuming all the good Terminators were originally evil Terminators created by Skynet, but then reprogrammed by the future John Connor, why would Skynet, an artificial computer intelligence, bother to create a petite, hot 17-year-old killer robot? <laughs> Skynet is kinky? I don't know. Artificial intelligences do not have teen fetishes. All right, oh, wait, they use it to look at it. Too late, I win. <laughs> See, what do you see? I can't. The living room appears to be empty. Okay, he must be in his bedroom. My spare glasses are in my bedroom, on my dresser, next to my bat signal. <laughs> I'm not going in there. Raj? No way, Jose. Well, I can't do it. I can't see anything. It's all right. Wireless mini cam and Bluetooth headset will be your eyes. Fine. One more thing. This is a subsonic impact sensor. <laughs> if Sheldon gets out of bed and starts to walk, this device will register it and send a signal to the laptop. At that point, based on the geography of the apartment and the ambulatory speed of a sick Sheldon, you'll have seven seconds to get out, glasses or no glasses. Won't my footsteps set it off? No, you'll be on your hands and knees. Now you'll need to get the sensor as close as you can to Sheldon's room. But how do I carry it if I'm on my hands and knees? It's a small brown paper bag, Ma. I'm looking at it right now. Why would I make that up? There's no ding-dong in it. <laughs> How are two ding-dongs tomorrow gonna help me today? <laughs> Ooh, more details about the new Star Trek film. There's going to be a scene depicting Spock's birth. I'd be more interested in a scene depicting Spock's conception. <laughs> Please, for Vulcan's mating, or if you will, pon far, <laughs> it's an extremely private matter. Still, I'd like to know the details. His mother was human, his father was Vulcan, they couldn't just conceive. Maybe they had to go to a clinic. Imagine Spock's dad in a little room with a copy of pointy ears and shapely rears. <laughs> <laughs> How come on Star Trek everybody's private parts are the same? No alien lady ever told Captain Kirk, hey, get your thing out of my nose. <laughs> solution. First, go into the future and obtain a cloaking device. Ooh, how far into the future? If I remember correctly, Captain Kirk will steal a cloaking device from the Romulans on star date 5027.3, which would be January 10th, 2328 by Pre-Federation Reckoning. Okay, I am setting the dials for January 10th, 2328. Here we go into the future. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I am 
Shiva the Destroyer. I will have the woman. I'm warning you, I was judo champion at math camp. <laughs> All right, that's enough juvenile squabbling. You stop it. You stop it, I say. I'm going to settle this right now. Neither of you are good enough for my sister. Who are you to decide that? He's the man of his family. You have to respect his wishes. You're out too, by the way. Say what? It's nothing personal. I'd just prefer if my future niece or nephew didn't become flatulent every time they ate an Eskimo pie. What are you so happy about? I'm not happy. It's the medication. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> In addition, gonna... I really don't think okay, that Leonard wants it. Okay, You either help me throw Leonard a birthday party, or so help me God, I will go into your bedroom and unbag all of your most valuable mint condition comic books. And on one of them, you won't know which, I'll draw a tiny happy face in ink. You can't do that. If you make a mark in a mint comic book, it's no longer mint. Sheldon, do you understand the concept of blackmail? Well, of course I... Oh. <laughs> well, let's see. We might consider Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger. Is that the woman in 2A? No, that's Mrs. Grossinger. And she doesn't have a cat. She has a Mexican hairless, annoying little animal. Yep, yep, Sheldon! <laughs> Sorry, you diverted me. Anyway, in 1935, Erwin Schrodinger, in an attempt to explain the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics, he proposed an experiment where a cat is placed in a box with a sealed vial of poison that will break open at a random time. Now, since no one knows when or if the poison has been released, until the box is opened, the cat can be thought of as both alive and dead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't get the point. Well, of course you don't get it. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> you have to be psychic to get it, and there's no such thing as psychic. Show them what's the point! Just like Schrodinger's cat, your potential relationship with Leonard right now can be thought of as both good and bad. It is only by opening the box that you'll find out which it is. Okay, so you're saying I should go out with Leonard. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me start again. In 1935, <laughs> Erwin Schrodinger...